Well, would you look at that? Just a gorgeous look at the Minneapolis skyline. Because if the Zags win tomorrow in Anaheim, they will be riding cloud nine all the way to Minnesota and the final four. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for staying up late with us. I'm Whitney Ward. The Zags celebrated a sweet 16 victory last night, but they are over that now. And tonight they have all eyes on Texas Tech. They spent the day preparing for that big matchup against the Raiders tomorrow. And a key part of the preparation, of course, is knowing your enemy. Brenna Green and Karthik Venkatraman are in Anaheim with an analysis of tomorrow's opponent. Welcome inside the Honda Center. I'm Brenna Green, joined by Karthik Venkatraman. And Karthik, as Gonzaga and Texas Tech prepare for their matchup tomorrow, there's a lot of talk about the defense since Texas Tech is ranked number one in the country in defensive, defensive efficiency. Yeah, when I saw the bracket, I thought that this could potentially be the toughest matchup for Gonzaga on their quest for a title run. As you mentioned, they're really good on defense, but what they also do really well is slow down the pace of the game. And I think that's what Gonzaga struggled with just a little bit this year. So when I talk to them today before their big matchup tomorrow, they know what they have to do to be successful on offense. It's going to be really big that we run in transition versus them. Um, I think that'll, that'll be something that, that's going to really help us, uh, you know, put uh, points on the board versus them. And understanding they're a pretty good defense team is going to be some type of possessions that are really, you know, doesn't look too pretty, but, you know, just trying to get the best shot on goal is probably going to be the most important thing. And, uh, you know, just trying to stay positive through it all. It's going to be important to, you know, play our game. Um, you know, respect the game plan we have and, and try to, you know, play, play smart. They don't have a lot of time to scout us and we do a lot of different things that are hard to guard. And, um, so it's kind of just a, a thing about playing, you know, playing our game and, and sticking to what we do best. So a higher scoring game, better for Gonzaga. I think they're going to try and score in many ways here. The free throw line, potentially a very big spot for Gonzaga. Switching from X's to O's, Car, I think you got to joke around with a few of the players today as well. Yeah, I tailored some questions for each of them just to kind of joke around lighthearted and I got some pretty funny answers. Have you heard the song Baby Shark? I have, yeah. Uh, do you feel like Brandon Clark sounds like Baby Shark, and do you feel like a remix could happen? Um, I've actually heard it. I've heard some uh, videos of like people chanting that, and um, I just think it's like funny. Um, so how does it feel like Brandon Clark? Do, 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 do. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess something, something like uh, that. How'd you get the nickname Snacks? Uh, just growing up, eating a lot of junk food and candy and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. No, no hidden talents. I make pretty good ramen noodles, so hit me up if you need some ramen noodles. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, instant ramen, a little seasoning sauce, some pepper, you know, some Frank's Red Hot. I'm your guy. Gillian, what's your favorite uh, phrase in French to say and what does it mean? Oh, oh, oh. That's careful, careful. Gillian, that's appropriate. <laughs> Mind your onions. Occupe-toi de tes oignons. He knows more French than, than me, probably. <laughs> What's your favorite poem? <laughs> Can I say it? Nope. Oh, come on, bro. But Karthik, today's Gonzaga players, so yesterday, let's look at the next generation. Just an hour or so down the road in Temecula, class of 2020 Gonzaga verbal commit Dominic Harris is patiently waiting to put on a Bulldogs jersey. I think it's a beautiful thing just when, you're, when your brother falls in love with his dream. High school junior point guard Dominic Harris definitely fell in love with Gonzaga. I feel like it was the best fit for me, um, for what I wanted to do as far as basketball and, and just life, uh, being a leader and just being a young man. I feel like I can flourish there in the offense and just everything that they do. And I feel like it was just a good fit for me in my overall game. And his family? Well, it seems they're in love with it too. I think finding a great school for him that is consistent and uh, family-like really fits our family. For him to come back to say, uh, you know, I love it, it felt like family. So that's, that's I mean, that's as most comforting as you could get. When we went there, the love that you feel from the moment you step into the gym, as a parent, you want your child to go to a place that symbolizes home, and that is home. Dominic and his family loved Gonzaga so much that he verbally committed to the school midway through his sophomore year, which is extremely rare. But Dominic, well, he found something rare in the Bulldogs. I feel like when you know where you want to go, um, you shouldn't have to wait. Uh, most people wait their senior year and stuff. So I feel like if I, I knew I wanted to go there, so I just pulled the sugar on it. Expect a lot of pulling the trigger when Dominic lands on campus in 2020 because the kid can light it up. I would say electric. 
it's like poetry in motion. Straight beast. He's a straight beast. What do you plan on bringing um, to Gonzaga when you get there? A winning attitude, leadership, and um, I feel like I'm a dynamic guard, so I feel like I can make plays for my teammates, um, make plays for myself when needed, and um, I'll just bring positive energy and just wanting to win. His dad promises there will be a lot of winning in Gonzaga's future with Dominic at the helm, including one win that the team hasn't been able to achieve yet. We actually uh, play that scenario out, you know, all the time when we're training. You know, you know, this one's for the ring for Gonzaga, bringing that thing home. And um, so it's going to happen, Gonzaga fans, whether it's this year or in the next five years, we bring in a championship in Spokane. No doubt about it. I'm putting that on the record. But it's not just about winning for the Harris clan. They have bigger goals for his time in Spokane. If he can utilize his talents to better others while he's in Spokane, I'm going to be extremely happy. Um, I want to visit a game at Spokane, and they said, man, you know, not only is Dominic a great play, uh, player, he's a great person. You know, and when they can tell me that, that he's making an impact there, is when it, I know it's all came together. For now, though, they're just allowed to be proud. Um. I'm overjoyed. Um, I'm happy. He's my baby, so. Karthik, his family talked in that piece about how athletic Dominic is. He already has a Sports Center top 10 number one play on his resume. Yeah, that dunk was absolutely nasty. I think it's still on his Twitter account, too, if anyone wants to go check it out. I know I've watched it a couple times, so there's a plug for you, Dominic. Yeah, go follow Dominic and then follow us while you're at it. I mean, why not? Reporting in the Honda Center, I'm Brenna Green. He's Karthik Venkatraman. From two sports. <laughs> Why not? Absolutely. The Zags fate we know all depends on the outcome of tomorrow's game. Today the school just announced that it is preparing some package deals to travel for the next game. Crime 2's Shayna Waltower brings us more on who's going to get the first look at those tickets. You've been searching, frantically searching for how you can get those tickets. If Gonzaga wins tomorrow against Texas Tech, they'll be in the Final Four, and that could give fans a chance to see that game in person. But before you get too excited, it's not for everyone. The university announced its package deals to some of its donors. It's all based on its priority point groups, which are basically based on donations and contributions to the school's athletic program. People in the top 5% have about 2,400 or more points. 6 to 15% have anywhere between 775 to 2,400 points. And the remaining 85% have 50 to 750 points. According to a press release from the university, the top two groups will get access to the travel package immediately after tomorrow's game. On Sunday at 8 p.m., the third group will get access, as well as those who give $250 each year to the men's basketball program. Now, package prices haven't been announced yet. The university ticket office says they'll put those out once all the Elite Eight games are completed. We'll have more details on those packages on our website at crimp.com. Shana Waltower, Crimp 2 News. And of course, those packages are available through the university, but there are some other ways you could still get tickets online as well as through the NCAA. Gonzaga is trying so hard to convince us that they are something. They actually made shirts. These are real shirts that you can buy up in Spokane that say Gonzaga exists. It's honestly probably the saddest thing I've ever seen, you know? We made some shirts, too, that I think are a little bit more accurate, and I hope these really catch on. Gonzaga. Okay, Jimmy. So with that, the saga continues, because somehow Jimmy Kimmel still not convinced that Gonzaga exists. Or maybe he is, and it's just the joke that will never, ever go away. But either way, we do know that Kimmel sent his sidekick, Guillermo, to investigate the Zags. So Guillermo is a character who commonly appears on Kimmel's show. He arrived at the Honda Center in Anaheim as investigative journalist Sherlock Ombre to see for himself if the Gonzaga players are real. So he saw them practicing. He paid a visit to the locker room. He even talked to some of the coaches and the players in person. Yet somehow. Fake, 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 
Fake, fake. Guillermo's full 400 page report will be headed to Congress next week and we will go through that. Okay, Guillermo, you're done. Get out of here. So we can't seem to convince Jimmy Kimmel that Gonzaga is an actual school, but somehow he did choose them to win the NCAA tournament. So, so far he's actually doing pretty good. I'm not doing so great. How about you? Let's take a look at the Creme 2 March Bracket Challenge right now. Jane McCarthy actually leading the way in first place right now, followed by Karthik. He is in second. Alexa Block and Tom Sherry tied for third. I'm way down there at seventh. So go ahead and check out how your bracket is doing, though, on creme.com. Lots of people are actually doing pretty darn well. Of course, all those brackets could fall apart tomorrow. One seed Gonzaga will battle three seed Texas Tech for a chance to play in the final four. So that game is in Anaheim tomorrow afternoon at 309. You can watch it all on TBS. And while we are all glued to our TVs tomorrow watching that game, the sun is actually going to be shining outside. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Weather Center now with a breakdown of what we can expect for the whole weekend. Hi, Thomas. Hey, actually looking like a great weekend. These pesky showers finally out of the way. So you might have an opportunity if you're just sitting on the couch to just open up the windows, let some of that fresh air come inside with it actually being fairly nice for the next couple days. Nothing on Doppler radar. That's what we want to see, especially after yeah, pesky, stubborn showers, whatever you want to call them. The last couple days finally out of the way. Temperatures did recover a little bit today. 56 was the high in Spokane, even up to 58 Deer Park, 62 out in Moses Lake today. And as we head into the morning tomorrow, should get more sunshine to start the day. We actually had a little bit late on this afternoon. Our temperatures are going to shoot up quite quickly, even getting up to around 51 by the noon hour. So that's all the nice news. What I'm mostly going to be focusing on is all the wet weather heading our way for the month of April. I'll break down why that outlook looks that way coming up in just a few minutes. I don't want to die today and I don't want any of these people to die today. Still to come tonight, we are hearing from the Seattle bus drivers who is being hailed a hero for driving his passengers to safety even after he got shot.